Did you know there are four different types of ground or hearts or levels of fruitfulness in our lives? Did you know that three of those are not good? Tune into today's broadcast. We're going to talk to you about how to become good ground for the Word of God. Welcome to today's broadcast of uh, Karis Daily. And my name is Greg Moore. Uh, I'm an instructor here at Karis Bible College, uh, director of the ministry school. I'm an ambassador for Army, Andrews Ministers Fellowship, and have the privilege of teaching you the Word of God. Uh, it's such an honor to come to you for you to open your uh, hearts to receive God's Word. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We'd, we'd love for you to write us and tell us that, you know, hey, I've been listening. Uh, we'd love to hear your testimonies. Just You can just go to Karis Daily GTN, Karis Daily GTN.com. Just let us know about how uh, these daily, Karis Daily broadcasts have been a blessing to you. Uh, today we're going to talk about how you can become good ground for the Word of God the Word of God, if, if it's left alone, if it's planted in the right heart, it's going to produce great fruit and a great harvest, everything that it's intended to do. And it, the Bible says it's, uh, His Word is incorruptible seed. <laughs> Praise God. That is, that is powerful. So uh, I'm going to uh, share a funny with you. Uh, this is called How to Get Rid of Worms. So a sixth grade science teacher did a lab experiment, experiment with her class one day where she placed four worms in four separate test tubes. The first worm was placed in beer. The second was placed in wine. The third in whiskey. And the fourth in mineral water. The next, the next day, the teacher showed the results. The first worm in beer was dead. The second in wine was dead. The third worm in whiskey likewise was dead. The fourth worm in middle mineral water was alive and well. The teacher asked her class, what lesson can we learn from this experiment? A wide-eyed little 10-year-old uh, boy in the back of the class responded, well, I got the answer, teacher. Whoever drinks beer, wine, and whiskey doesn't have worms. <laughs> Oh, that's greatness. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> you, you, you want to get rid of worms, that's how you do it. <laughs> I'm not advocating any of that, guys, okay? Just a joke, just a joke. Praise the Lord. So um, I want to look at Mark chapter 4 and verse 13. And Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables. So understanding this parable that Jesus uh, is teaching us is the key to understanding every other principle from the Word of God. If, if Jesus meant what He said, understand, if you, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand all the parables? This, this is the key. If you understand this principle and you get this down in your heart, then I'm telling you, you're going to be fruitful. You're going to be successful. You're, you're going to have your prayers answered. Your, your, your faith is going to, is going to rise. It's, your faith is going to produce what, what God intended for it to produce. This is the key to receiving revelation from the Word. It's a parable about the Word, but it's specifically a parable about the Word sown in various types of ground or various types of hearts and the corresponding fruitfulness when the Word is sown in different types of heart. And, and you'll notice that the variable is not the Word. A lot of people call this parable the, uh, the parable of the sower sows the Word. 
But the variable is not the word. The variable is the type of heart that receives the word. And he's trying to help us here. Uh, he's, he's talking to his disciples early on in their, in their uh, time with him. And because uh, this is in Mark chapter four, this is early in his uh, training of his disciples. And he's saying, listen, I'm, you've got to understand this. If you're going to produce fruit in your life, uh, if you're going to uh, see prayers answered, if you're going to have success, you've got to understand this parable because the seed of God's word, and I believe it's in First Peter, um, First Peter one twenty three or two twenty three. Let me see if I can find it. But it talks about the the word of God being incorruptible, uh, incorruptible seed. Um, yeah, it's ver it's. 1 Peter 1, verse 23, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the word of God is incorruptible seed, a uh, natural seed that you can sow. There can be good seed and then some of it not good, but the word of God, it's all good. It's all good seed. So uh, if the seed of, if the incorruptible seed of the word is sown in good ground, then it's impossible for you not to produce whatever seed you sowed in your, so, had sown in your heart, whether it's uh, a promise of financial blessing or health or relational harmony or wisdom, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're, you're praying, whatever need it is in your life, if you find the word on it and plant it in, in, in your heart and, and your heart be, is good ground, it's not possible uh, that you, you don't receive uh, the word of God. In fact, uh, we're, we're, uh, uh, Andrew's graciously giving uh, one of his books away, uh, Effortless Change. It specifically talks about this, how that the word of God will produce fruit effortless, effortlessly if you if you plant it in your heart and you can you can uh, get online go uh, and go to karisdailygtn.com uh, and you can order your copy uh, of that book. But listen, that it's this is good grant. Uh, God uh, God's the seed of God's word is incorruptible. The variable is our hearts. And what I want to talk to you about uh, and what Jesus is training us to do is how to have a how to have a good heart. So you can have a great harvest, praise God. So, verse um, verse twenty three and twenty four of Mark chapter four explains why this is such a significant parable, and how the various types of ground or hearts produce as much or as little fruit as they do. Look at verse twenty three of Mark four. If anyone has ears to hear let him hear. And then he said to them, take heed what you hear with the same measure you use. It'll be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given. There's some folks that are, they'll hear the word of God, but they only have their favorite teachers. It's like, and it's okay to have favorite teachers. You know, I, I love Andrew's teaching and just very simple, very down to earth. And, and, and it's easy to understand. I, I, I love Barry Bennett's teaching and Carrie and, and uh, Wendell and, and Barry. And, but then there's other ministers, you know, I don't get as much out of, but many times what we do is we, we, we tune them out. And, and then we fail to receive because we're not valuing the word that's come out of their mouths, maybe because not everything they're teaching uh, you agree with or I agree with. And, and you know, they have a few bones. I like filet myself, uh, you know, but I like what my pastor years ago, John Osteen, who was uh, Joel's dad said, you know, you need, to be, you need to be as smart as an old cow and eat the hay and leave the sticks or smart as an old cat, eat the fish and leave the bones. Now, if it's just all bones, you know, I'm not going to receive it. But here he's telling us, you know, you need, listen, you need to have ears to hear you need to value the word that you're hearing. 
if you're going to receive benefit from it. And then it says in verse 25, for whoever has, specifically has ears to hear, to him more will be given. In verse 22, the more that will be given is, is revelation. And more revelation will be given. But whoever does not have ears to hear, even what he has will be taken will be taken away from him. So with the same measure that you use, it'll be measured to you. And I like to say it like this, the value you place on the word that you're hearing determines what you get out of it and what kind of ground you become. The value that you place on the word you're hearing will will determine what you get out of that word and in what kind of ground your heart becomes. The value you place on the minister who is speaking or the lack of value you place on them will determine whether you can receive from him or her. It also affects what kind of ground your heart is for the word that he or she is ministering to um, or, or, or is ministering. And, and, you know, it's like years ago, there was a lot of teaching that, you know, women couldn't teach uh, because they read that verse in 1 Corinthians 14 that said women should be silent in church and, and if they had any questions, ask their husbands at home. And so the, the, then, then the whole church, uh, you know, so, so many of the ch- denominations said women, women can't teach. And yet, if you just look at 1 Corinthians 14, when he's, when he's, he's giving you points of order for how the gifts of the Spirit and how ministry is supposed to operate, and he's not changing the subject when he's talking about women, he's, he's talking about points of order, and specifically, he's not speaking to all women. Why do you know that, Greg? Because he said, women, go, don't, go, if you've got questions, go ask, go ask your husbands at home. Well, the only group of women that have husbands are wives. So he couldn't be talking to single women because you don't have a husband to go home and ask the question to. And if you compare that with 1 Timothy 2 where he's talking, he's basically giving you the same principle, the context there is husband and wife, Adam and Eve. And simply, he's just simply saying, trying to establish a point of order. He said, I do not allow a wife to use her ministry platform to shame her husband, you know, usurp authority over her husband or try to straighten her husband out. And so that misunderstanding by itself has kept, you know, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands or more people from receiving from women. And yet women have revelation from God. My wife hears from God. In fact, my wife sounds a lot like the Holy Spirit a lot of times. And so um, we need to value the word we're hearing and and not be so selectively tuning people out. In fact, look look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, This is the Apostle Paul uh, speaking about, um, about actually the same subject about valuing what we hear. And he said, verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal and as to babes in Christ. So he's talking to people who are carnal and people who are babes. Uh, And he said, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able, for you were still carnal. For where... There is and where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, "I'm of Paul," and another, "I'm of Apollos," if you only have ears to hear one messenger, I didn't say this. I didn't read. I didn't write this. The Bible says you're carnal, and you're not good ground to receive the word of God that God wants. You're not valuing that word. Now, listen, it's not wrong to have favorite teachers. They, that their teachers, it, it just reson- their teaching style resonates with me. But I'm not 
going to tune out everyone else because that's, I'm limiting uh, myself becoming good ground to the word. Several years ago, um, I, I went to Rhema Bible Training Center uh, where Kenneth Hagin was the uh, founder. And uh, I went there because Karis wasn't around then. But uh, he, he invited Lester Summerall uh, to speak while he was still alive then. And, and he taught for three days and three nights. The last night, Brother Summerall made a statement. Uh, he had a great message, but the, in the middle of all that, he made a statement. And he said, uh, God took my mother when, and when she died. You know, of course, death, uh, the death of the saints are precious to the Lord because the Lord, the Lord receives them. But, uh, you know, the Lord, the, the Lord didn't take her or cause her death. And so the next day, Brother Hagen got up and shared with the, with the people, uh, all the students, and said, how many of you heard uh, Brother Summerall talk about last night how God took his mother? And how many of you uh, know that we don't teach that here? We don't see that in the Word that, that God, now God received her, but he, 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 didn't, he wasn't the cause of her death. And everybody lifted their hands and then he said, how many of you tuned him out after he made that statement? And about 50% of the hands went up. And Brother Hagen then said, five minutes after he made that statement that I didn't agree with, he shared revelation with me, or he shared revelation with us that answered a question for me that, I, that I've had for 30 years. I said, wow, that is so powerful. And we're, we're guys, we are so um, selectively uh, tuning people in and out, and we need to stay open <clears throat> to the Word of God. I'm not saying we should get into mixture of law and grace, but what I am saying is we need to, even if people aren't uh, preaching a pure message on some on some on some. Uh, subjects, we need to stay open and stay learning because we want to be good ground for the Word. And so <clears throat> how you value what you hear will determine what type of ground your heart is for the Word. So here in, Ma in Mark 4, Jesus deals with four different types of ground and varying degrees of fruitfulness. So the first type of ground he talks about is in verse 15. It's called, uh, these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When, and when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Um, this is caused by valuing another belief system or traditions of men above the Word of God. So your, your heart, your belief system is all, your heart's all packed down with this uh, wrong belief system. And then so your heart's not open uh, and where to be plowed up uh, where it can, be, it can receive uh, the Word of God. Like, you know, things that you've heard in the past, God helps those that helps themselves. You know that's a verse from Scripture, right? It's not. Okay, that closes the heart off to humility and receiving mercy to receive from others. It also closes your heart off to be an agent that God would want to give to others. Um, or here's another one: My God wouldn't send anyone to hell. That closes the heart off from acknowledging you need a Savior, and that receiving Jesus is the only way to heaven. It also closes you off from reaching out to others because you, you know that they need the Lord. I mean, here's another one. Everything that happens to me comes through God's hand. Therefore, directly or indirectly, it's the will of God for my life. And that closes the heart off from receiving, uh, from receiving grace to walk in your authority to resist sickness and disease that's attacking your body. And this type of ground, guys, I just gave you some examples of that. It's, it hears the word 
Matthew 13, 19, it hears the word, but it understands it not. Why don't you understand it? Because your, your heart's, heart, you got hard packed ground with traditions of men that you've held on to greater than the word of God. And you, you're not going to bear fruit. Your heart's not going to, uh, the word, the seed of the word is not going to penetrate that kind of ground and it's not going to bear fruit. Um, so for those people, you can pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they might know the hope of his calling and the exceeding greatness toward them of, of his riches to, and inheritance toward them that believe in the greatness of his power and all those things. You can pray that over them and, and pray that they, they would get a revelation of the word. Don't give up on them and you can pray that over yourselves, actually. And then the second kind of ground we find in verse 16 and 17 of Mark 4, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time afterward when tribulation, that's problems and challenges in life or persecution, that's betrayal and attacks by other people, arises for the word's sake. Immediately they stumble or they're offended. These folks are excited about the word. When they hear it, they're usually the biggest ameners. Amen, Andrew. Amen, Pastor Greg. Amen, Pastor. And, and they're pumped up and they're outwardly excited. They're ready to charge hell with a water pistol until difficulty comes or they receive a negative report from a doctor or things don't progress as fast as they expected or they get their feelings hurt because you didn't platform them or you didn't do what they wanted you to do or you didn't let them sing in the choir or whatever. So you, they, be, they think they can sing great and you know, you, um, they, they can't even sing in the shower real good. So, you know, they get, a, <laughs> they get offended, you know, and, and the, guys, this is ground when your heart, when you allow your heart to become offended, you become hard packed ground. You become ground that's, that's difficult to, re, to produce fruit in your life. When, when you let your heart get hard and become offended at God or at people, you know, and, or, or, and you'll just say, well, I guess it, the, this, the word's just not working for me. That would be like a farmer going out and planting seed and, and digging up the seed to see why it's not growing. But guys, we, we've got to protect our hearts from offense. Um, if if you, you read in Matthew 24, verse 10, in the last days, many will become offended. And then they'll, it goes on to say they'll betray There'll be betrayal and hatred and false prophets rise and, and, um, and, and then their deception and lawlessness and cold love. It's a downward spiral of becoming offended. And, and, it, and it closes off your heart from receiving the word of God. This person receives the word initially, but they don't get rooted in it. Um, and they, they, allow, they allow circumstances of life or people not treating them fairly to get upset, to get offended, and it just closes off your heart. You're, you're, no, you're no longer good ground for the Word. You're, you're trapped in a time warp of your pain. And you need to let God heal your heart and watch frozen and forgive those people and let it go. Praise God. Then there's uh, the thorny ground in verse 18 and 19. Now these are those, these are the ones sown among thorns. They're the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust or desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. This person makes a commitment to serve God, give to the church and missions as long as it fits in with his or her success plan. I'll serve Jesus as long as it doesn't get in my way or as long as it doesn't cost me too much. 
They're focused on finances. They're focused on, you know, what's best for me financially. They're making decisions based on finances. They get worried about many things, especially about money, about what other people are thinking about them. And, you know, I believe in Jesus, but I just don't want to get uh, too fanatical. This person is more concerned about what others think than they are about what they believe and what God thinks. And John 5, says, how can you believe, how can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? This person's uh, value system is skewed. But Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things are added to you. That's why this person, they can believe the Bible, quote scriptures, but the word is choked off because they've got their folk, they're distracted by so many other things. Uh, they, they, need, they haven't paid attention to the word. But finally, the good ground, verse 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground those who hear the word, accept it, bear fruit, bear fruit, bear fruit. That's the key, bear fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. The good ground understands the word. You can see that in, in Mark, Matthew 13, 23, and it brings forth fruit with patience, uh, Luke 8, 15. So the, this good ground understands the word. It brings forth fruit with patience. It doesn't get offended. It doesn't, uh, you know, put a different belief system above the Word of God. It, it, and it, it doesn't allow them, this, this heart doesn't allow themselves to be distracted. And they hold on to the Word, even if it takes a month, if it, even if it takes six months, even if it takes, you know, a year or two years. You cannot believe, receive from God and believe God and receive from him, from him with your eye on the calendar or the clock. This person understands the word, values the word, holds fast to the word, and with patience bears fruit. That's what God has for you. That's what he wants for each of us. And if you'll get in the word of God and, and hold on, believe it, hold on to it, receive it, don't let yourself be offended. Don't let yourself be distracted. Don't say it's not working. I'm telling you, God will cause his incorruptible word to come to pass in your life. Thanks so much for being a part of Karis Daily. Uh, go to karisdailygtn.com and get your copy of Effortless Change. God bless you guys. We love you. Have a great day.